Scotia, traffic copter three, sir. Those on the right base, turning final two seven Scotia. All right, three, two, one, roll off. There's those to the right, and there's our simple turn. RPM might build. Scotia, traffic copter three, sir. Tell departing two seven right, traffic Scotia. All right, welcome back to Hogs Daily Flight Brief. Today we're going to do a 90 degree auto rota rotation or two. And a lot of times when I talk about these, people go, well, but you do straight ins and 180s for the check ride. And it's like, yeah, that's true. But going back to that instructor that helped me out, if you watched yesterday's video, when I was a brand new CFI, I wasn't super confident when I first got my first job to go out and teach. So I hired a full-time RA, high-time R22 CFI to go out with me and freshen up my knowledge. And so he taught me the importance of doing 90 degree auto rotations and how you can take those 90 degree auto rotations and turn them into an actual 180. So Chris, just kind of talk us through thought process again of setting up and performing a 90 degree auto rotation. Yeah, so we'll just do a 90 here. So I'm kind of extending, kind of going away from the runway here just to give us a little bit more time on base. Um, yeah, the reason why, again, what I what I call a training scar, the way that we do our training com makes you have a training scar. So, we, yes, you're right. We train for straight in and 180. And if that's all you do, sometimes in the need of the emergency, the student's only going to think, well, I only can do a straight in or a 180 because that's all I've trained for, right? Sure. Well, the 180 is nothing but uh, that's the most the turn's going to be to get you into the wind. Obviously, if you're flying along and you have a tailwind, and the engine quits, you need to do a 180 to get back into the wind. Well, you know, how often do you actually have that direct tailwind? A lot of times you got a crosswind, or you may just have a 30 degree uh, uh, off to the right or something where you just got to make 30 degrees, you know? So that's why it gets, it, it, you get, we do the 180 so you can get right back into it. But really, you know, the odds of you doing have to do a complete 180 are, are low, I think. Um, so what we're going to show today is just do, we're just going to do a 90 degree. So I've extended my right base here. Again, the winds are three, four, zero. But in order to do the training, we want the runway, which is two, seven. So I'm, I'm on an extended right base right now for two, seven. And what we're going to do is we're going to enter an auto. We're just going to do a, a uh, 90 degree turn into, into two, seven. Get a little closer here. Scotia traffic, copter three, sir, tell us on the right base, 27 Scotia. Again, we're cruising about almost 80 knots. We're about 1,600 feet indicated, which is where I would be normally cruising anyway. We want this as real world as possible. All right, warning, caution lights are off. Gates are in the green. Landing light is on. Got plenty of fuel. Look down for final. I don't see anybody. Haven't heard anybody. Nobody on the test. All right. Scotia traffic copter three, sir. Tell us on the right base. Turning final two seven Scotia. All right. Three, two, one. Roll off. There's those to the right. And there's our simple turn. RPM might build, depending on how steep your turn is. If it builds, then we're just going to come up a little bit on the collective and slow it down. And then once it slows down, then we're lowering it back to the floor. And now it just turns into a straight in. So just a small little turn. Now I'm just riding it down. Here comes street top level. A little bit of a flare. Flare's going to get more aggressive. But the aircraft start to settle. Push the nose forward. Come up on that collective. Be ready for that right pedal. And there we go. Awesome. And I want to back up what you said. It could be straight in. Could be 90. Could be 180. Could be 170. Could be 30. Could be 46. Right. Depending on the situation, once we get into the real world auto rotations, whatever it takes to get into the wind the best as possible or to take a combination of what's going towards the wind plus an open spot versus a wooded area, the scenarios are endless. So back to that objection of training to a standard, people going, well, that's not real world. Well, you go out and try to find some things to do right. to make it more real world. And that's a little bit of what we're doing now. And we're going to do an upcoming video practice engine failure at altitude, which is a maneuver in the PTS that's going to become the ACS. We're going to, that's upcoming in another video. Now that we've showed you the 90, come back tomorrow and we're going to talk about the 180 auto rotation. And again, this is food for thought and I want to show you something that this instructor taught me when I was a new CFI and I was struggling trying to build up my confidence to teach autos. 
something he showed me that I think is really, really cool. We'll come back tomorrow for 180 degree auto rotations. Do us a favor, subscribe to the channel, click the bell, and we'll see you in the next video. Peace out. I almost forgot what we were doing on that last one. Did you? <laughs> I was like, oh, shit, I need to make that turn. I need to enter the auto before I turn final. <laughs> nice. Hey. <laughs> A lot going on. You're flying the helicopter. You're listening to me. You're looking outside. You're trying to plan where, you know, where you're going to enter the right. turn, and then pretty soon, yeah, you go. What the <laughs> right? Yeah, I got it. Like, oh yeah, I need to enter the auto before I make this turn to final. Oops. Whatever. We have all been there and done that. Yeah.